Hi there. So what's your sign? Stop. Stop. Funny you should mention that because our next story is all about stop signs, traffic lights, you name it, anything to keep the traffic moving. Here's Sandra Neal with that story. Even though it may seem like some traffic lights are in the wrong places and there's never enough advanced greens, the traffic controllers here in Metro Toronto want you to know they're doing what they can to keep traffic flowing. There's a continual growth of traffic signals out there on the street. At the moment, we have 1,580. Uh, we're not far off. I think this year we will reach the 1,600 mark. We are communicating with more than 99% of our intersections uh, every day. I think is, is highly commendable. In terms of the safety factor, if there is a problem, we know about it. Give me a short on pair two, and give me a short on pair one. Even though Toronto has thousands of traffic lights, only 22 people work at the traffic control center. The bulk of the work is handled by computers. What we have here is about 70 computers that are sending commands out to the intersections. We're actually receiving a lot of information back here about what's going on out there on the street. What's going on in the streets are really two types of traffic signals. One that runs on a cycle controlled by computers at the center, and another that operates according to traffic and pedestrian crossing. We install a sensor in the pavement. We usually make a small cut in the pavement and install some wiring that can sense when there is a vehicle at the stop bar wanting to get out of the side street. For pedestrians, they have to push the button. Well, uh, there are too many traffic lights. They're red too many times, I guess. <laughs> they need more advanced goes. They do. Longer advanced goes and longer lights in rush hour. That's all. Good afternoon, Traffic Control Centre. Mm -hmm. One moment, please. I'll direct your call to the proper channel. A lot of people call about the push button saying that they waited about, you know, uh, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. That's just about impossible. But uh, 90 seconds, rather, is maximum that you'd ever wait. And that's stretching it a little. People will request a flashing advanced screen. They think it's quite, you know, you just flick a switch and it's on. It's a little more complicated than that. You have to uh, investigate the area. You have to discuss it with your supervisor. You look it over very carefully, and if it's warranted, we'll put it in. But then, of course, the cost is quite high. I don't think people realize that either. There is congestion out there. There's not a lot we can do about it. And regretfully, we can't give the citizen what they want. But at least we try and make them understand the reason behind our analysis. Traffic signals are only part of the congestion problem. Land development in metropolitan areas is developing at a faster rate than our roads and highways. But constructing new roadways may not be the solution. Professor Van Aird here at Queen's University says that drivers need to be more informed about traffic problems while on the road. And he says he's found the solution. Welcome to the few road menu. Select trip destination. OK. The professor's answer is to drive around traffic congestion with the help of his talking traffic computer. There are similar computers being developed in California and Great Britain, but these, like Professor Van Aerts, are prototypes. We can select our destination. Okay. Which in our case will be Queen's University. Okay. In particular, we want to go to Ellis Hall. Okay. Now after we left the airport, now it's providing us with uh, a screen at every intersection which indicates which turning movements uh, it would like us to follow to get to Queen's University uh, the quickest way. We find that the prototype has cost um, somewhat over a thousand dollars. We expect that within, say, three to uh, four years, uh, you may be able to find a unit like this costing about four to five hundred dollars. Do you think this is the answer to alleviating certain traffic congestion problems in a metropolitan area? 
It's not the only answer. Uh, I think you, if one tries to look for one answer which will s uh, solve all problems, um, you won't find that. I think it's one of the answers which will um, help you get around traffic congestions and deal with sometimes the uncertainty of, of knowing when will the road be congested and when will it not be congested and giving you a means by which you can uh, respond to that.